am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with an over dyeing project. I have a red commercial colorway here from Knit Picks. This is Wool of the Andes Bulky Superwash in the color red. So it is a true, honest red color. <laughs> and my plan is to speckle on top of this red uh, to create a colorway with more dimension. Huh, I'm actually surprised that the label says it's 100% superwash wool because I thought the wool of the Andes line was all Peruvian Highland wool. Uh, but yeah, maybe editing Rebecca will take a look at the website for me. <laughs> now, before we get started, there is one thing I want to quickly do, and that is to get a little snip of this original color. Um, so that way we have this little bit of yarn to compare at the end. And I'm going to tape this to our yarn labels. This is just in case we end up with a lot of color spread or anything, and if I'm curious if we have altered the original color a lot or not. Because honestly, I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a countertop speckle or if I wanna do some kind of immersion speckling on this yarn. To prepare ourselves for either scenario, we're gonna pre-soak this yarn in some water that already has acid in it. In this basin, I have 16 cups of water and four tablespoons of white vinegar. And so that should be enough acid for countertop speckles, if I decide to dye this on the countertop followed by steam setting, or if I wanna do some immersion speckling, I could use this yarn, or sorry, this, this pre-soak bath as the dye bath for our project. Now, one thing I am slightly um, thinking about is, whether or not we're gonna have to see some bleeding from this yarn. And since we have acid in here, it's maybe less likely that we'd see color come out, but I'm unsure if I see a hint of something. I don't think I do, but this is something that we will pay attention to, or I'll try to pay attention to, when I remove this from this pre-soak tomorrow because I am gonna go ahead and let this soak overnight because I'm planning on dyeing this in part of a live stream uh, that later then I'll edit to be a Die Cut Weekly episode that you're watching right now. So please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss any new videos. Sometimes I like to do full day yarn dyeing live streams, whether it's for a celebration purpose or not. And having your notifications on is the best way to make sure you don't miss it. And if you would like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment I'm using in this video, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. I am a Nitpicks affiliate, so if you make a purchase through one of my Nitpicks links, I may earn a commission. But anyway, I guess I'll only check back in if I observe any bleeding. Um, otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. So what is the point of this project? Why should I over dye a commercial red colorway if I want red yarn with speckles? Well, the reason why I'm doing the video this way versus dyeing my own red tonal base to start with, which is absolutely something you could do, is that sometimes when you're shopping around, you might find yarn on clearance and it might be a yarn base that you love at a really good price, a price that is better than buying bare undyed yarn. And so I like to do these over dyeing videos from time to time so that way you can know how you can transform a colorway you get that maybe isn't quite what you wanted and you can transform it into something that you do want. And at some point I did receive a request from one of you to over dye a commercial red colorway with some speckles and so that's why we're doing this project today. It's the next morning and I'm ready to remove this yarn and huh, as I was removing it at first I thought that maybe there was going to be some color in the water and there is the lightest hint but it feels more like a discoloration you get from like oils in the yarn. The it's really not that much bleeding. Uh, so I think I wanna just go ahead and do countertop speckles versus immersion. So I'm gonna set this aside on my counter and bring over a yarn mop. Uh, this is a skein of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn, 100% superwash merino wool. And I have pre-soaked it for a while, but I'm just popping it into this water plus vinegar mixture. And then I'm gonna squeeze it out. Now, I am planning on using this yarn mop throughout multiple videos <laughs> that I do today, and I will probably have like a YouTube short that talks about it at some point. But I figured this is where we start, so I'm gonna at least mention it. 
The dye we're going to use today is Dharma's True Black Acid Dye. This is a dye that does not break, and I think that doing a countertop technique with a straight dye powder will help us preserve a lot of our red, but also get us really chunky contrasting speckles on our yarn. Now I want to spread the yarn out on the counter so that way we can expose as much of the yarn as possible uh, because that way when I'm speckling on, we won't need to flip and move it as many times because the more you move the yarn, the more opportunity you have to accidentally spread the dye out and create a little bit of a streak. And that's not what we want. But now I'm gonna go put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and we can start speckling. Okay, so for the speckling today, I'm gonna take a pinch of the dye powder and a little bit on my glove, but then I'm gonna hold my fingers together. And as I go over the yarn, I am moving my fingers against each other. So I'm rubbing versus separating them. And this is allowing the dye to fall out of my glove fingertips and onto the yarn. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see this a little closer. And so I'm just rubbing my fingers together, which is letting this dye fall onto the yarn in these little specks, which will grow. They will grow some, but they should be very visible from far away. In fact, you can even see some here right now because that dye has already sunk in a little bit. Now, I could go mega, mega heavy uh, or not. It's all a matter of preference. But some light speckles like this on a yarn that will read red from far away more than black can add a little bit more dimension into your project. Just adding a little bit more. Okay. And now I've got dye on my fingertips still. So that's where the yarn mops come in. I'm gonna take the yarn mop and wipe that dye off of my gloved hand uh, and onto the yarn. So that way I'm leaving no dye behind. And then this will end up being a beautiful yarn uh, in its own right. So whenever I stop using a color, I always screw the lid back on that way something happens and the container goes flying, dye doesn't go flying. <laughs> I like to wait a little bit after I speckle on the dye before flipping it to give the dye a little chance to get wet and sort of sink into the fibers. So I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, and after five minutes, I have a feeling that the yarn looks like there's a lot more impact on it. And so we're gonna carefully flip it over. And as we're flipping it, I'm trying to lift and place versus rub. Uh, and this is just so that way I can get access to more of the yarn to add speckles onto this side. Now, after touching the wet yarn, my glove fingertips are a little bit damp. And so I do want to dry them on a paper towel before going into the dye container. Because if your fingertips are wet, the dye will stick to them and that might not give you the look that you are wanting. Now, at the beginning of this video, I did save a tiny snip of the red in case we were gonna have it covered completely. And that's when I was considering doing an immersion speckling technique. With immersion speckling, you have your yarn in a hot container with water. And so then, you get the colors to strike faster, but you can also see some spread because some of the dye will dissolve, hit the yarn, and that'll be it. And then some of the other dye will hit the water, dissolve, and add sort of a gray layer on top of the yarn. So if we were doing something immersion, there's a chance we could end up with very little of the true red left, depending on the color and the acidity and so much else. But now, I'm gonna wait five minutes and then I think we're ready to steam set this. Our specks have spread, but I'm not mad because this will make it more visible in a finished product. And so some of these specks are nice and small, some of them are larger splotches, and that is all okay. But now, I wanna steam set this for 30 minutes and I'll show you the steamer basket once it's done but I'm gonna carefully pick up the yarn, put it in the steamer basket, and you can see from where I picked it up, see some of those drag marks right there? 
That's why I want to be careful when it comes to rubbing the yarn on the surface because then you can get smudges. But I am going to take the yarn mop and rub it on the counter. But don't worry, I also wash this before I do my next project. But true black can stain a little bit. And so when I notice that a yarn mop is starting to spread dye around a little bit, then I will pop it in a steamer basket for a little bit once that opens up. But anyway, uh, make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so that way you can see how that yarn mop turns out. It has been 30 minutes and you can see here we've got some larger splotches on our yarn but I also still see some nice small speckles. But we'll give you a closer look once things are no longer steamy. I'm now going to go set this aside so it can cool completely so we can wash it. Let's wash our red yarn. Now, what? <laughs> okay, this is weird. I was like, oh, we shouldn't have any bleeding. Well, we have some black bleeding and some red bleeding. Now, true black is a primary so there isn't red in there. So we shouldn't be seeing red from that black dye. We are seeing red from our red yarn, which is mind boggling to me, um, except for the fact that we had vinegar in that first rinse. And so I just added some plain dish soap and I'm gonna fill the basin up with water. I was not expecting bleeding. Oh my goodness. The nice thing though is that this yarn is spectacular. And the bleeding seems to have mostly resolved, but let's just show one more rinse. Let's see how we are. Oh yeah. No more bleeding. Into the spin dryer we go and I'm gonna hang it up to dry. Here is our finished colorway and no matter what I do with the white balance, I feel like the color on camera is coming across a little bit more yellow. The reds aren't really coming through as true as they are in person. But given that this is a commercial colorway, I think that's okay. Now, I have these snips of the original color that I saved before at the beginning. But I don't even really need to peel that off because since I did a countertop speckling technique, we know we preserved that original red color and it didn't transform. If I had been doing these speckles in an immersion setup, some of the black dye might have spread and shifted the reds a little bit that may or may not have been perceptible. And so it could be worth me doing this again, getting another red yarn and doing immersion speckles. So if that is something that you would like to see, please let me know down in the comments section. Now, the, as the speckles go, some of them are larger and chunkier, and some of them are a little bit lighter and more fine. And this is perfect, because when you knit with it, some of these larger speckles will take up most of the stitch, and some of the smaller ones might disappear a little more. But in the finished project, you should see little specks of black that'll give a little bit more dimension to otherwise this I hate to call it flat, but solid red color. And not that there's anything wrong with working with a solid yarn. I just enjoy having a little bit more dimension in whatever I'm working with. I picked black for the speckles today because I wanted to have high contrast between the new color and the old color. But you could also speckle a solid yarn, or I mean any tonal yarn or whatever you have, with a color that is closer. So say you have a solid and you want to add more dimension, I could have picked a red, which maybe wouldn't have shown up very much, but I could have picked a yellow or a purple or something that is close, closer, but not, doesn't necessarily have as much contrast that would have added just a little bit of depth and dimension to the colorway while still being very subtle. Now, if you want something like that, you subtle variation, you may as well either buy a tonal yarn or dye your own tonal yarn. And you don't need to even speckle. You could take the solid yarn and dye a tonal layer of red on top of it just to add 
some depth and contrast to it. You've got many different options there of doing a dye job that is so subtle and soft. I mean, maybe that's another video I have to do. But anyway, uh, you, you don't have to add speckles to add dimension, but you have many options. And basically, you can start with any type of yarn. So whether you're going through something in your stash, you have a m many multiple skeins that left over from doing a sweater, or you see yarn on clearance that you like, but maybe you want to have just a little more variation and have it not be such a solid. So you have options. And really, I mean, the sky's the limit. We could come up with as many variations of what we wanted to do to this while still keeping a red yarn as you want. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I really hope that you found this video helpful. And if this, this is the first video of mine you've ever watched, welcome to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I love exploring different ways to add color to yarn, whether you're starting from bare yarn, uh, commercially dyed yarn, or even over dyeing my own hand dyed yarn. I have a whole playlist filled with specifically over dyeing videos, but I also play around with lots of different fiber types and fiber blends and, well, we have a lot of fun. If you love the yarn I dye and want to bring some home, I do sell the yarn that's been featured in my videos in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, you can find more information about the shop and links to it and everything in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.